His Holiness is on page 60, uh, page page 67 of uh, of the Tibetan text. So His Holiness is most important thing is to uh, think on the uh, suffering of uh, the conditioned. Uh, uh, suffering of the conditioned uh, body. Uh, so this section is on the suf suffering and uh, so uh, Section ah. Okay. So uh, we are on the uh, subheading uh, uh, of uh, which says at the time of death nothing else but only Dharma can help. So this is uh, So the text is saying, at the time of death, uh, uh, one has to, uh, one dies at the time of death, one would be wearing uh, uh, stinking, uh, st stinking covering and uh, the so-called friends and dear ones and loved ones surround w one looking at uh, 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 but unable to help you these friends your, your beloved ones cannot help you but stare at you and after that, you <coughs> we have no um, guarantee as to where we will be born. It's total uncertainty. So, uh, also after that, one's, one's body uh, <coughs> starts rotting away and smelling, and it will be taken away to the cemetery and uh, will be um, either abandoned there or in today's time will be cremated and turned into ashes. Uh, his oneness now switches to uh, liberation in the palm of your hand. Mm. The <coughs> So we are, uh, uh, we are on page 299, uh, page 299, uh, sorry, uh, page 300, sorry, it should be page page 300, uh, the subheading, the drawback of not practicing seriously. Sumja. 
чего мне давать? Ale, sorry, two. Ale, two. Let's read from page, the beginning of page 292. Um, so, for example, campers coming to see Shakyamuni statue in Lhasa Cathedral first leave their homes, arriving finally at the statue. The road leads them here bit by bit. It is impossible for them to skip any part of the way. At this point, in Tsongkhapa's main lamrim, uh, he explains why the three ascending uh, practitioners has to be led on the three stages, uh, or the stages with the three beings. It is explained there that it is important to explain bodhicitta from the very beginning because uh, from the beginning it is important to introduce bodhicitta and show to the dis practiced disciples that uh, the ultimate aim of the practice is uh, the state of Buddhahood. So if we wait uh, to, att because that's because if uh, a teacher or the practitioners wait to um, understand this, then uh, um, uh, before one, uh, by between the time the practitioner begins practicing and until the time he attains, he uh, atta uh, sort of reaches that stage to practice uh, bodhicitta, a great time um, and opportunity is lost um, uh, for the practitioner to train himself in this mind of bodhicitta and in, in sort of correcting his mot motivation. Uh, Shanti Deva says in the engage, uh, okay, his son has already passed that. So in the small and medium scope sections of the Lamrim, you must focus on achieving Buddha, Buddhahood for the sake of sentient beings. Okay, here, this is what his honest was referring to. Developing bodhicitta is the actu actual practice. The small and medium scope parts of the pa path are preliminaries to developing bodhicitta. You may be wondering, in that case, it must be sufficient to teach the great scope from the outset. I doubt that the, that the so-called small and medium are needed. There are two reasons for discussing all three. These are people, they are people who cannot train the, their minds in the great scope initially, so they need to practice in stages through the small and the medium scopes. This approach is more beneficial for people with good, mediocre, or inferior minds. Also, without some familiarity uh, with the entire part of the path, you will have, uh, uh, his is having and getting an understanding and re uh, attaining realization is different. Uh, understanding is something you can achieve right from the beginning, whereas attaining the realization is something you attain, uh, you achieve later on through meditation, meditative uh, training. This approach, okay, I'm now going uh, back in this text. This approach is more beneficial for people with good, mediocre, and inferior minds. Also, without some familiarity with the earlier parts of the path, you will have no renunciation at all in your mind stream. So you need to defeat any pride you may have about being a Mahayan Mahayanist or a follower of the sacred tantra tantras. To develop bodhicitta, which is the actual practice, you need to develop such compassion that you simply cannot bear others being tor tormented by suffering. So. But in order to develop this compassion, you must know exactly how you yourself are pl plagued by suffering. And you must understand that the whole, whole of samsara is by nature suffering. But first, you must fear the lower realms, for without this, you will have no rep repudiation of celestial and human happiness. You must therefore train your mind in the small and the medium scope parts of the path. This training is like the foundations and well wall supports of a house. We have not yet achieved advanced results like previous practitioners. Jay Miller Repa trained in the Miller Repa trained in the p common path under Marpa, and many of his songs are about his development of these realizations. And you need the Lamrim to make the specially rapid progress promised by the sacred tantras. This is the implication of the names, the easy path, and the swift path. 
that Miller River achieved the unification in one lifetime was not due to Tantra alone. He had already trained in the path of three schools in former lives. In one former life, for example, he was the Kadamba uh, Chakti Cha Ticho, as said in the introduction to mind training. All the people who embark on the sacred Tantras must have been trained in the shared part of the part of the comp part beforehand. We did not we did not do this. We embark on the sacred Tantra first. Tantras first did not keep our tantric commitments and thought we meditated on the two stages. They say that much, many such people will go to the Vajra hell. Yeah, his son is talking about uh, distractive mind um, because if you do an analysis, then the power of the analysis automatically sort of force the mind to stay on that subject on which you he's he or she is analyzing because the uh, because the person feels kind of interest and uh, enthusiasm uh, due to the subject and that also helps in sort of um, bringing the mind uh, uh, you know, from the s scattered state to a focused state because some some people uh, f you know, uh, if they start, if they just train on a uh, step, um, uh, and, uh, sorry, uh, single pointed meditation, they find it difficult because this they've, uh, they've, um, they feel like the mind keeps on sort of distracting away, and it's it's kind of hard for the, such kind of people to practice uh, single pointed meditation. Other, um, on the other hand, if so uh, for such kind of people, sometimes it, it's better if they do some kind of uh, analytical meditation because that's due to the enthusiasm and in excitement of the subject matter. It helps uh, the mind uh, uh, sort of stay fixed on the subject matter. Um, also people who, <coughs> you must be far-sighted from the beginning, his honor says, uh, you know, his son is referring to this statement. Uh, compassion, uh, 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 looks at some sentient beings, whereas wisdom looks at Buddhahood. If one is too, sort of has a very, um, sort of, uh, very, very uh, suffocative kind of mind, state of mind, uh, uh, very narrow-minded, or rather, in other words, uh, then that will lead to depression and uh, um, wind problems. So even in Bodhicitta Charya, Bodhisattva Charya, if one feels tired, uh, it advises the practitioner to relax and rest. And Kuntan Rinpoche also has said in some of his advices that uh, some practitioners uh, don't practice in such a way that from the day one uh, <coughs> you wish to attain great scholarship and great uh, realization and walk uh, strive day and night without r resting and r relaxing uh, after three days the person has uh, fe already uh, felt tired and wanted uh, feel like giving up so such such kind of attitude will not work at all so it's kind of a, one should have a long, long-term strategy uh, in Dharma practice. <coughs> you must be far-sighted from uh, that. Uh, I mean, the text. You, we, you must be far-sighted from the beginning. You must feel I am prepared to use my entire um, human life to pursue just one meditation topic of the Lamri. But we are far-sighted about worldly things. Which is the wrong way around? Wrong way around. Lack, lack, persistence in worldly things, not the Dharma. If you feel it's impossible not to achieve anything in the Dharma and practice with courage, you will not have to spend a month or a year on a single meditation topic. Geshe Kamapa said, "We our, uh, we say our con our contemplation achieve nothing. Why, why do you think that is? Don't lie. You are distracted in the day daytime and fall asleep at night." In other words, never mind our spending a month on a meditation topic. We have not even meditated on a single topic for the length of a single meditation se session. How unrealistic to feel. Even now, I haven't developed realizations. We don't make, det make determined practice our start starting point, yet we roll our eyes into the top of our head and uh, pretend to meditate. 
when we do just one recitation of, for example, His Holiness is saying, when we say I'm doing Dharma practice, Dharma practice, it doesn't mean that uh, you make a small shrine room in your ho room in a house and, uh, and stay there, sit there, you uh, know, straight and close your eyes. That's not the meaning of Dharma. The pr Dharma practice means wh whether you are awake or sleeping or like walking around or talking or whatever, every, all the time keep aware of, uh, uh, watch your mind and see whether one is controlling your mind. So therefore, uh, having a good understanding of Dharma from the right beginning is very, very important because even in then whether you are walking or talking or whatever, even in sleep and dreaming, dreaming state, uh, you, you have knowledge of what is, uh, what is to be done and what is not to be done. And that will always sort of uh, help uh, be like a guidance. So Dharma practice doesn't mean I will do something uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow or I will go on a mountain and do it there or, or go to Bodh Gaya or something like that. It is, it is something you should do right where you are. Uh, we don't make uh, back to the text page, uh, let's see where His Holiness is. Uh, the next subheading is how to extract the essence from your optimum human rebirth. Uh, the next uh, the next subheading is training your mind in the stages of the path shared with the small scope. The next subheading is developing a yearning for a good rebirth. I think His Holiness already passed all this. The next subheading is recalling that your present rebirth will not last long and that you will die. His Honor says, uh, this is what the text uh, he's, rep uh, he's reading is talking about. He's talking, uh, he's talking about lay practitioners. Uh, 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 how, what, uh, about an ideal way of uh, lay practitioner or something like that. The drawbacks, uh, the next subheading is the drawback of not remembering death. The drawback, uh, there are six sections. Page His Holiness is uh, saying somewhere here on page 296, uh, Geshe Potova said, said, you cannot saw with a two-pronged needle. If you do not think about that, you will not ignore this life. If you do not ig ignore this life, you will be controlled by the eight worldly concerns. Being happy if you acquire and unhappy if you do not. Being happy if you if comfortable and unhappy if not. Happy if famous and unhappy if not. Happy if praised, unhappy if criticized. Nagarjuna said of these eight, said of these eight, uh, but by the eight worldly uh, concerns, we mean the worldly thoughts of acquiring or not, comfort or discomfort, fame or notoriety, praise or criticism. Keep a level head. These are not subjects for your thoughts. Compare this with the story about Geshe Podova and the offering of turquoise, Lingreba said. In samsara, the city of preconceptions, wander the zombies of the eight worldly concerns. You are in a terrifying charnel ground. Have your guru perform an exorcism. So ignore this life and devour yourself wholeheartedly to the Dharma. If afterwards you wonder whether you will be able to support yourself, feel that it would be all right even if you cannot. And be prepared to become a pauper. Our teacher left his home and became a homeless monk. He renounced all the wealth of his royal position, wore, wore clothes he found in, in rubbish heaps and so on. He devoted himself to wholeheartedly to Dharma. He was prepared to become a pauper. Jeremiah did the same. 
But you might wonder, if I become a pauper for devoting myself wholeheartedly to Dhamma, when I, lie, when I die because I will not get any food, you should be prepared to die as a beggar and say to yourself, if I die while undergoing hardship for the sake of Dhamma, then so be it. Should you ignore this life that like that, there are no stories of Dharma practitioners starving to death after they stopped e earning their livelihood. Our kind teacher dedicated to us merits worth 60,000 rebirths as universal emperors so that his followers would not starve to death. Even in times of such famine, famine that pearls have to be bartered for uh, flour. As they say, if the great meditator does not roll down the hill, noodles will roll up to him. Geshe Ben Quinquen said, also said, when I was a layman, I wore a sharp sword, arrow, and spear at my belt, but I had many enemies and few friends. When I was a bachelor, I had fields that could yield 40 bushels of weed, so people gave me the nickname, the 40 bushel bandit. I used to hold up people by day and rob villages at night, but even so, but even so, food and clothes were scarce. And my cows give no milk. Now that I practice Dharma, I'm short of neither food nor clothing, and my enemies are at peace. His Honor, His Honor says, Dharma means, uh, practice means um, if you can control your uh, afflictive emotion, that is Dharma practice. That is the Buddha Dharma, the practice of Buddha Dharma. Without that, whatever you do, like uh, faith, tolerance, uh, it's uh, no, there's no guarantee whether what you are doing will uh, turn to Dharma practice or not. In, in, in Madhyamika Avatara, uh, where the Chattakirti refuted uh, birth from others, he has said that uh, we can all see that everything is born from others. Uh, that is a convention. Everybody accepts that, especially Buddhist. Everybody cons believes and accepts that everything is, exists inherently from the uh, outside of the object itself. If you say it doesn't ob exist from its, uh, itself, people will say you are uh, crazy, like you have uh, extreme view, you are a radical or something like that. self-cherishment and others uh, cherishing others uh, even in among Christians uh, as and other practitioners of other religions there are people who who do uh, that practice very sincerely so in from the point of view of conduct and actual practice they have a wonderful practice but what is lacking is the wisdom side uh, they do, uh, uh, his Holiness is referring to the wisdom of dependent arising emptiness which is the only antidote for uh, overcoming the afflicted emotion and uh, self-grasping and inherent existence. Page 298. So in the text it says, uh, giving up one, uh, one's life and practicing impermanence, but his honest says mainly it is really, again, emptiness, the meditation on dependent arising. And if you can do that, then meditation on uh, uh, impermanence and those other practices automatically follow, uh, follows. Um, uh, His Holiness is speech on page 299. The criterion for having done this is, as, is if you want to be like the seven Dalai Lama, Gesa Gyaso, or the Benjamin Lama Losan Ishi, the seven Dalai Lama said that he owned only his he owned only his Vajra bell and the three robes, nothing else. The first, his own says his own is saying the first Dalai Lama is really a great uh, spiritual master and practitioner. When he was in his very advanced age, he said, oh, "Now I'm uh, I'm aged and old." As if like he sort of said that in a sort of a rather uh, old, uh, sort, of, sort of a sad mood to his disciples. And some of his disciples, um, and to one of his disciples told him in return, uh, you are the all-knowing all omniscient. There's no uh, sadness. Um, uh, you, you will, there's no doubt that you will get born in the pure land. And then in answer, the first Dalai Lama said, 
I have no wish to get born in the Pure Land. I have just wish to get born in uh, samsara where there is more suffering and where there is more pain and where sentient beings, uh, I can serve sentient beings the most. This is real great Dharma practice. This is, that's, uh, I used to feel, you know, this, if a real Dharma practice means something like that, it's really great. <coughs> we, we might not necessarily crave for all uh, or the, the um, and there's a story about a uh, story uh, I'm in the text again and there's a story that even an offering of 100 in gods of silver did not please the pension Lama Losa Yishi. we might not necessarily crave for all three food clothing and reputation uh, some of us may be f fettered by just one of them others by two others indeed by all three but the hardest of the three to abandon is the desire for repu uh, reputation many people no matter who they are scholars monks teachers meditators want a good reputation or to be famous said in this life you may be a scholar among a great meditator but you want to be called a scholar or a monk you may place a notice on your door that you are in retreat. You may be a great meditator who shuns other people, but a great meditator, meditator of this life. You want people to call you great meditator. Even the offerings you make to the three jewels are made only to be seen by others. Some people fancy themselves as themselves great meditators or adepts. They give up food, clothes, and foods and food and clothes and work hard as such in austerities as taking only the essence of flowers or pebbles. Yet people who deep down have absolutely no desire for reputation are rare. Geshe Potova's analogy say, said, the fox and monkey uh, lurk near the doorstep of the grooves. In other words, instead of examining the fiery, the fiery pit that lies on your own doorstep, you explore faraway places. That is, you explore the higher paths, the Buddha levels, Tantra, and so forth. While not, while not noticing your craving for this life's tr trivia, you are not free of these fetters. This is one of the drawbacks of not rec recollecting death. Uh, page three hundred. The drawbacks of not practicing seriously. If you do not uh, recollect death, you will not practice Dharma seriously, nor will you be able to practice continually. At present, we do not have the great perseverance in our vicious practices. We only practice until we get bored. Our not recollecting death and impermanence is the blame because Keshe Kara Komishung recollected impermanence. He never even got, got around to cutting down the thorn bush on his doorstep. Miller River used to wear pieces of cloth and barley flower sacks. And when they eventually fell to pieces, he did not even bother to sew them together. He did, he did virtuous practices instead. If we were to have a similar recollection of impermanence, we would not strive hard at other activities. We worked hard at virtuous practices and not feel downhearted each time we started. We would be only too glad to do them. The drawbacks of acting vulgar, vulgar, vulgarly. Uh, the next subheading is the drawback of having to die with regrets. Um, uh, page 301. Uh, that, uh, the next subheading sub is the advantage of remembering death. There are six of these, the advantages of being most beneficial. Uh, uh, I think his son is right here. When Yung Tumpa's benefactor died, this inspired Miller rappers to practice Dharma. Many of the great adepts used to hold skull cups, trumpets made of human thigh bones and so on to improve the awareness of death and permanence. The, the Vinaya speaks of keeping drawings of skeletons in bathhouses and like for the same reason. Geshe Chenga was if you do not do at least one meditation session on impermanence in the morning, I think, uh, I think you will devote the whole day to this life.
basic syllabus. Uh, his only says, have tea first. Um, uh, page 303. If you recall, uh, the advantage of being most powerful, if you, if you recall death and permanence, they say you will Okay. Um, I'm okay. Uh, sorry, I think his sonness is uh, a little bit uh, on page uh, 301. His sonness is uh, once I went to Thailand and went visited a monastery and in that sort of uh, porch in front of the temple. This, uh, they have a put a sort of a, uh, something like a, um, uh, a camera or something like a, something like a video. You can look through the lens and see. So in that they show uh, scenes of a dead person's body uh, 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 going through the de decaying process. First day, second day, like that. First the body itself, then after two days, three days, three days, like that. And I found that, uh, you know, like a wonderful example. In our t own tradition, we have this practice, practice of uh, putting a huge picture, uh, p painting a, uh, the wheel of samsara uh, in front of the, uh, the, outside the gate of the monasteries. That's a very good practice also. In, uh, and also in, uh, in Tibet, we have this tradition of, uh, of uh, some sort of similar practice of putting up similar paintings. That's also good. And then uh, we also have this tradition of uh, uh, putting paintings of the four guardians of the um, uh, four guardian deities, uh, like the Vaisharamanas, uh, like Kokovera, uh, like that. That is kind of. Um, um, useless and meaningless that's probably a chinese tradition and came from the chinese uh, culture <coughs> uh, the this one says just by meditating on impermanence it's it's really hard to overcome uh, afflictive emotion and uh, Im uh, afflictive emotions and uh, things like desire, etc. That's very difficult. Aff um, impermanence meditation alone cannot uh, have that power. That power. Uh, is on this speech. Uh, 303, I think so. Uh, that would. His uh, Holiness is referring to this uh, line here. Uh, the, uh, under this heading, the advantage that you will die happily and gladly. Uh, which reads, at death you will have the confidence that comes from practicing dharma faultlessly and be like a son returning to his father's household. Londu Lama Rinpoche said, I am not afraid of being impermanent. I will be an old monk in the morning and get the body of a god that night. Uh, his Honor says, that's uh, slightly uh, poorer than uh, what the first Dalai Lama said, uh, which His Honor already uh, mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, back to the text. So the best Dharma practice uh, practitioners are happy to die. The middling die gracefully. The least have no regrets. They will feel, I managed to practice page 304, Dharma well. It will be easy for me to die now and have no regrets. As Jerry Miller Ripper said, I fled to the mountains because I feared death. I have realized emptiness, the mind's primordial state. Where were I to die now, I have no fear. Next subheading, the actual way to remember death. This has two sections, the nine-part meditation on death, meditation on the aspect of death. 
Not even the early Katambas had this detailed treatment. It consists of instructions taken from Jetsongkapa's work. These works have many unique, profound, and detailed instructions. They contain the thoughts of the classical Indian treatises on Tantra. They have special points drawn from Tsongkhapa's own experience. Their headings are not in the muddle, not in the muddle, and so forth. Uh, next up, heading the nine part meditation on death. Uh, this has three roots. One, thinking of the inevitability of death. Two, thinking about the uncertainty of what you, uh, when you will die. Three, three, thinking of how nothing can help you when you ex die, exit Dhamma. Three reasons are given for each route, making nine parts in all. Next uh, heading. Uh, the first route, thinking about the inevitability, inevitability of the death. The first of the three reasons given for this is... Uh, the first reason, the Lord of Death will inevitably come and no circumstances at all can prevent this. Inevitably, you will die. No matter what sort of body you have, no matter what you, where you go, no matter what method you employ, you cannot stop the Lord of Death. Not even a sound of body, sound body will stop, stop him. The sayings of the Buddha on impermanence tells us. Page 305, if all, even the Buddhas, Prateek Buddhas, and Shavaka disciples of Buddha, abandon their bodily remains, need I speak of ordinary beings? In other words, when we all, when we now tell stories about the Bhagavan Buddha who achieved the Vajra body and about the many adepts of India and Tibet who achieved the unification, it might seem that they are still with us, yet they have all gone to Nirvana. If no common appearances, our teacher Buddha and others have died and their Vajra bodies has been destroyed, why should people like ourselves not die? When our teacher was about to pass into Nirvana, many tens of thousands of his retinue, Shariputra and others, went before him into Nirvana. Then Buddha, our teacher, while in Kushin Nagari, commanded that, commanded that his last sleeping platform be built be between two solid trees. He then subdued his last two disciples, Pramudita, the king of the celestial musicians, and the Brahmin priest, uh, Subhadra, Subhadra, who was not a Buddhist. They could not bear to see the Buddha pass into Nirvana and Subhadra immediately pass away himself. When our teacher was just about to pass away, he removed his upper garments and urged people, urged people to take a good look because it was difficult to get to see the body of the Thakata, his last teaching centered on impermanence. Then in order to show that his, this meditation was fundamental, he said, all conditioned phenomena are impermanent. This is the last teaching of the Thakata. He then passed away into Nirvana, when most of the Arhats who had achieved partial and co complete karmic freedom understood what had happened, they too passed away. Their number was one short of 500. Moreover, Indian pundits like the seven uh, Herak, um, Herak, uh, seven Herak's of the teaching, the 80 great adepts, the six ornaments, the two supreme ones, and so forth, and in Tibet, Shandarakshita, Acharya Padmasambhava, uh, and Dhammaraja, Tizun Devzi, Adisha, and his disciples, Manjushri's embodiment, Lord Tsongkhapa, and his disciples, and so forth, have all passed into Nirvana. Now only their reputations remain. How could we escape death? When Lama Tsongkhapa Rinpoche attuned to the Dalai Lama and gave him Lama teachings, they say there were many thousands in the audience. Now not one of these Lamas are disciples and or disciples is still alive. And they say Chusan Lama Rinpoche and others gave teachings very like, very like our present one at this very spot. Now only the reputation remains. In a mere hundred years, all those sitting in this assembly will be dead and the only Remnant will be the report that something had happened. Um, uh, the report that uh, <clears throat> uh, if after uh, remnants will be report that something had happened on this spot. If after only a hundred years, all the people now in the southern continent, in China, in Tibet, Mongolia, and so forth, even the babies born today are sure to be dead, and not one left alive, uh, then no better karmic results awaits us. Likewise, if your time has come, there is no place that will not mean death for you. The sayings of the Buddha on impermanence tells us, wherever you stay, there will be no place that does not mean your death. Uh, not in the sky, not in the sea, not even if you stay in the mountains. Once Prince Virudaka, King Prasenajit's son, intended to slaughter the Shakyas, Mud Mudgalyayana, the thought to use his miraculous powers to cast Virudaka and his army beyond the iron mountains that enclosed this world, but Buddha said it was impossible to stop them. 
Some Shakya men and women were concealed inside the Dakota's baking bowl. Some were put inside the palace in the suns. But even those Shakyas were still killed. And that day was such that they were going to die. Running away, bribery, falls, etc. will all be quite useless from the sayings of the Buddha. Anyone with the five clairvoyant powers of clairvoyant powers of great riches be able to go far into the sky cannot go to a place that this is not under the death's jurisdiction in other words if feeling could free you from death then having miraculous powers or the five clairvoyant powers of the rishis would be insufficient would be sufficient to run from the lord of death but even such people cannot escape and will die even force cannot stop the lord of death the most powerful lion can defeat elephants by clawing their heads but when death comes lions die with their claws drawn in even a powerful universal emperor must die all his power cannot help we to we tore up our beloved wealth and prop property and we propose that these things will be enough to bribe the Lord of Death. But if, as they say, he cannot be bribed with the precious jewels of Universal Emperor, how can we speak of other people bribing him? In the instruction given to the King Sutra, we find, suppose there are four great mountains in the four cardinal directions. They are firm, stable, and with solid cores, or are uncracked, indestructible, extremely hard, uniformly dense. They touch the sky and thrust into the ground. On they come, grinding all to power, all grass, trees, twigs, branches and leaves, all animals, insects and elements. They cannot be stopped by fleeing by force, by wealth, by substances, mantras or medici medicines. Great King, the four ter great terrors are similarly coming. They cannot be stopped by fleeing by force, by wealth, by substances, mantras or medicines. What are those four? What are those f these four? Old age, sickness, decay and death. Great King, old age will come and destroy you in your prime. Sickness will come and destroy your health. Decay will come and destroy all your splendor. De death will come and destroy your life force. These four will not be pacified or placated by fleeing by force, by wealth, by substance, by mantras or medicines. In other words, if the great four, great, if the four great firm and swift moving mountains were to put, were to come from the four cardinal directions and crash together, they would pulverize grass, trees, and so forth. They would be difficult, uh, nomad. So his son says, uh, you have to meditate on the three, uh, three uh, main points, nine reasonings, and three resolutions. So when you meditate on the, you have to visualize death and uh, so uh, think on the answer uh, <coughs> uh, that death will definitely come when it, uh, and when it will come, there's no certainty. Uh, and at the time of death, uh, nothing but only Dharma can help. So if you think in according to this um, process, it's, it's more effective and the mind uh, will start, uh, will sort of, uh, you know, feel more inspired and moved uh, through these steps. His Holiness is on page three one one. Uh, page three hundred eleven. Um, uh, um, some people, some think I will not die because I am not ill. Even this is not definite. Pa patients may be, may be confined to their beds and yet not die. While many healthy people die sudden deaths, some people die in the middle of a meal without ever having had the slightest 
premonition, premonition that they would die before they had finished eating. Some people present at large ceremonies in a monastery went to the temple on their own two feet, only to be carried out by others as corpses on a stretcher. Many government officials draw up grand political programs but never get round to carrying them out because they die before completing their work. In my saints, in, my, in many saints collected works, the notation left unfinished appears. They were to be, they were able to be, able to compose only the title along with some fragments of verses and died before finishing. From among the relatives and friends who surround us in our valley, we can say that so and so has died, but we do not think this will happen to me. We treat it merely as an object of curiosity. We even hear people say, he has a nice saffron robe. He is, he is hoping I get it next. Such a death will definitely strike you down at some point, though when is, though when is uncertain, as they say. There's no telling which will come first, tomorrow or next, your next rebirth. Do not put effort into tomorrow's plans. It is right to work hard for your next life. From the sayings of the Buddha, some of the many people you see in the morning, you will not see in the evening. Some of the many people you see in the evening, you will not see in the morning. How can you be so sure that you will not die tomorrow? Uh, so let's go on to the next subheading. The next subheading is the second reason when you will die is uncertain because there are many factors contributing towards your death and few towards your life. The third reason, the uh, next subheading, the third reason when you will die is uncertain because the body is extremely fragile. Uh, the next. Uh, um, His on page two, is on page 313, uh, the, the heading, the second reason when you will die is uncertain because there are many factors contributing towards your death and few towards your life. We are now, uh, the text reads, we are now protected by our past prayers, our merits and the Buddha's compassion. There are besides a great many contributory factors towards our death, like flies buzzing around rotten meat, 80,000 different types of hindering spirits, factors contributing to death surround us. They want to, when can we eat you? When can we take your breath from you? The 404 types of disease swarm, us, swarm around us like a fog. 360 types of evil spirits, the 15 great evil spirits who attack children, the 360 devouring spirits and so forth are greedy for our lives. You do not just have these external contributory factors. If you put four snakes into a container, the strongest snake will eat the rest. If the humors such as wind, bile, and phlegm, or the four elements get a little bit out of uh, balance, this cannot be a contributing factor towards you, your losing life. Many more factors contribute to your death. Very few contribute to, to your life. And even those all contribute to your death. Therefore, always practice dharma. Not only are there many internal and external contributive factors to death, but many of the factors contributing to life may also contribute to death. How houses can collapse, roads can break up, overturn, horses can buck and trample you, your friends can take, trick you, fools, fool can dis disagree with you, and so on. Many things can act, act as contributive factors towards death. Our life force is like a butter lamb in a draft. As Nagarjuna says, we live surrounded by the factors of the lot of death, like an old la oiled lamb in a drought. Next heading. The third reason when you will die is uncertain because the body is extremely fragile. Uh, His Honest is talking about uh, uh, how death occurs, uh, how the breath 
the last breath, how the last breath is uh, uh, sort of uh, occurs and uh, and the person uh, sort of the dissolution starts happening. Um, in other words, when you go to s the text reads, in other words, when you go to sleep, the inhalation and exhalation of your coarse breathing is suppressed and the subtle wind element, element can move freely in your nostrils. How amazing that you do not die when you resume your breathing of the coarse wind element. Uh, wind element. Think about this, when you will die, as die is uncertain. This is like being certain that an enemy is coming to kill you but not knowing when. That from today on you will try to stop him. That then you should feel that you must practice dharma now. If you want to practice dharma, but instead have some work that will last this year and or the next year, and you think I will practice dharma after I finish the work, you are deceiving yourself. Kundaran Bhutti said, um, "It seems this work will t only take a month or a year." When it's finished, then I will practice pure dharma. This thought is the dr demon that tricks everybody. We feel I will practice dharma after I finish this or that project, but unfinished work is like the old man's mustache. The more it's cut, the more it grows. The other word, in other words, in other words you never have time to finish one project, then another project comes and so you need to go get that done there, then there will be another and you will think, I'll just finish this. Worldly work is like a river. It never stops, as Kondaran which is said. The great rest is before the tomorrow when you are going to practice Dharma comes. Uh, before the tomorrow when you are, is on this is saying, uh, is, uh, the motivation and uh, the goal makes a difference here. Uh, when we are, those who are in business, um, like, um, if we are too much attached, and we need f um, f uh, f uh, financial progress, there are seven, seven billion out of the seven billion. Most are, are poor. We cannot say just pray for, pray to improve your financial condition. That's useless. That's not right. Sorry, my FM stopped working. So there's a lot of uh, corruption in the world and a lot of big gap between rich and poor. So we cannot ignore uh, financial uh, economic progress. We need economic economy. We need economic progress. But we should uh, aim that for the welfare, for the general human humanity. So. Even if those who, his is saying, those who are working in the financial sector, or rather in 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 business uh, uh, career, it's it's all right to be uh, doing that. But it's uh, it's good if you can sort of uh, deep down have this motivation to help, to be of service to humanity through your uh, uh, through through this uh, career. Kondan uh, Rinpoche said, the great risk is before the tomorrow when you were going to practice Dharma comes, the time for you to die will come today. So do not let your head be turned. If you would practice Dharma, do it to, from today. If you put things off and say, when this is finished, I will practice Dharma and I will practice Dharma tomorrow, the work will never be finished. Because, but, the, but the day when you are ready to die will surely strike like lightning. Think over the three reasons why it is uncertain when you will die, and right away from where you will abandon worldly works and decide to waste no time in practicing Dharma. But there is no need for students um, in monastery to interrupt their studies or group groups uh, or group debating practice and go off to some mountain cave. Instead, you must convert such Dharma you do now into real Dharma. Suppose formerly you will you you only recited the words of text. You must. You may have recited the verse, until enlightenment, I will take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and the, the Supreme Assembly thousands of times, but check if you have probably thought over the verse even once. You will see that you have rarely done so. No matter what effort you put into business, farming, or so forth, they will never turn into Dharma. But those of you us who are ordained must convert what we do into Dharma. It's a pity if we don't normally practice Dharma. It's no pity if we merely do not know facts. The next heading, 
the next heading is third, the third route, thinking of how nothing can help when you die, exit Dharma. The first reason, the wealth cannot help you. Uh, let me catch up with His Holiness. Um, next. Uh, the next, the next subheading is the second reason: friends and relatives, friends and relatives cannot help you. Uh, the third, uh, next heading, the third reason: even your body cannot help you. Uh, uh, which reads. When you die, it will be of no help. He's on, uh, we are on page 317. When you die, it will, be of no, it will be of no help if all the mountains turn to gold and uh, you will become uh, turn and all become family. Quite apart from your wealth, possessions, relatives, you will have to leave behind your body the things you call my body, which is born from the womb with you which you protected from hunger and cold, which you wouldn't even dare prick with a thorn, and which you guarded and cherished like a wish-grinding gem. As the Benjamin Lama Chukyans has said, the this body you so cherished and protected will prove deceptive when you most needed it. In other words, think about how you will com be completely separated from even this body that you have so cherished and protected. Having thought over these three reasons, it, it does not help to stay afraid and depressed, as Kondhan Rinpoche Tembedrem has said. Dharma is the guide to the undeceiving path. Dharma supplies you for the long track. Dharma is your captain on the difficult journey. From this moment, practice. From this moment, practice Dharma with your three doors. J. Miller Ripa said. Um, that sounds like some kind of name. Listen, lady of wealth. It's a name of a lady. Uh, listen, lady of wealth, you have faith. You Have you enough supplies for the long road of future lives after this one? If you do not have enough supplies at hand, practice generosity. That will be your supply. Have you enough companions to face the great terrors in future lives after this one? If you do not have enough companions at hand, practice divine dharma. That will be your companion. In other words, dharma is your guide, captain, pr provisions, and provisions for your journey when you die. If you have not practice dharma, think on how poor your death will be, no different from that of an old st stray dog in some alley. Uh, uh, people go, going to visit their homeland do not make preparations for staying where they already are. They put all their energies into packing their luggages and nothing else. You too must also decide to practice the Dharma only, something untarnished by the obscurations of this life. Next section, next heading, meditation on aspects of death. This is an instruction from my precious guru. Although it mainly centers on how to practice, pursue meditation on a practical teaching, uh, it is said to to be good to contemplate in this way. You should recall the things said in the earlier text, Compassionate Refuge or Penjan Lama Lozan Chuki Genzin's petition made to be freed from the perilous road of the Parto. Examine just what will happen when you die. Then, then you, when you are approaching death, as it says in uh, the Benjamin Lama's petition for the Parto, when the doctor gives me up and rituals no longer work, when friends have given up hope for my life, when anything I do is futile, may I be blessed to remember my Guru's instruction. In other words, the sickness gets worse despite proper medical treatment or rituals. The things the doctors tell you are not the things he's telling everyone else. Your relatives and friends tell you only nice things to your face, but get together in secret behind your back and agree that you will die. You display, you display various uh, nasty internal and external symptoms, your body heat dissipates, your breathing is labored, your, no your nose becomes constricted, your lips are con contorted, your complexion is pallid, and so on. You regret your past sins, but you have not sufficiently expiated in them, or refra refrain from repeating them, or practice virtu virtue purely. Your fatal illness causes you suffering, and signs of progressive dissolution of the elements appear. Diverse, terrifying hallucinations are blocking the immediate appearance of your present life. Your body aggregates, your aggregates are rolled up in a blanket, 
put in the corner of your room and hidden behind a curtain. People light a cheap bottle lamp for you, and if you are a llama or the like, they will dress you in your initiation costume to make you look presentable. You may now walk out to have a good house of warm, soft clothes and carpets, but you, when you die, your body will be folded in three trussed up with the leather, leather strap left in, in New Gear and some other places uh, where indigenous people of thousands of years uh, lived there. They, to make themselves look gracious, they wear strange headdresses, like uh, even skull cups on their uh, head. His son is just uh, uh, saying that amusingly. Um, you may uh, continue from the text. You may now work hard to have a good house of warm, soft clothes, carpets. When you die, your body will be folded in three, trussed up with a ladder strap left on the bare earth, the rocks on uh, his own struggle. His son is just uh, making a joke about uh, a scalp cup, scalp cup uh, found from somewhere. Uh, At present, you may, uh, at, at present, in our protectors' chapels in the monasteries, we make, uh, like, uh, we draw paintings of the human uh, dry skin and human skull cups like that. That's like sort of uh, terrifying people or making, frightening of people. Uh, when we, uh, when we go into the main chapel, we uh, we have to look. At, we are supposed to look at the Buddha's image with great peace of mind, and through by remembering his teachings like that. Then on the other, on the other side, then we as we enter into the protector's chapel, it is deliberately made dark, and the deity spirits there, the uh, protectors live there. Uh, they are uh, all like in fierce appearances. Uh, so we go enter them as in sort of in a feeling of fright, and uh, that, that doesn't make much sense. Um, um, at present, you may enjoy the del most delicious food, but in the future, you will have no live, no you have to live or the smell of burned offerings made for the dead. At present, you may be called such nice things as Geshe, Sir, Venerable Monk. In the future, a time will come when your body will be called corpse and you will be called the late Mr. So-and-so. Whenever you lamas see your initiation costume, it should remind you that um, when you die, your remains will be decked out in it. When we see our blanket, it should remind us that our corpse will be wrapped up, wrapped up in it. This is how much this is how much remembrance we need. J. Miller Ripper said, "The terrifying thing called corpse now lives in the channels, in the in the channels of the yogi's body. This is what the body is indeed." Um, Page 321. His Holiness is on page 321. These things are discussed in the instruction given to the King Sutra. Gendun Tenzi Gyatso's Red Head Lamrim discusses how meditation on impermanence can be in, can be an antidote to getting fat at the at a time when you have access to magnificent go clothes, goods, and so forth. Whenever you see your possessions, that is your clothes and so forth, all these things, these are only masquerade, masquerading as many things. There will become a time when people will divide them among themselves, and I don't doubt they will, they will say, these belong to the dead person. 
I now cherish my body and I look forward, look after it, but a time will come when it will turn into what is called co a corpse. If I were to see, the, see it then, I would be terrified, I would be nauseated if I touched it. It will be tied with the robe and they will, be, they will do no all manner of things to it. Think how your leftover barley flowers will be used in offering, how the rituals of introduction to the powder will be performed next to your head and so on. Some of the people will handle your skull, saying, this is his skull, the quality is not too bad. Such a time is coming, and from now on, you are to do things you will not, you will not regret. The criterion for having developed realization into death and impermanence in your mind stream is if you want to be like Geshe Kara Gumjung. Day 11. His son switches to Shamal Lamrim. Next section is on uh, what will happen after death. Uh, one will either take rebirth in the lower realms or in the lower realms. That's uh, right now we are in the Shamar Lamrim. So, so he's on his, uh, the text is sort of uh, discussing on uh, uh, as per my current way of behaving after death, there's only one uh, one way for me that is to go into the lower realms and how to pretend prevent that, and that is uh, uh, by practicing dharma and uh, right from right now without wasting any time, any more time. Yes, so I can hear you. I can hear His Holiness was. So today uh, seems to be the day of bad omen. So uh, so th this morning there was no problem. So maybe the afternoon it seems there's some problem. So it seems to be the day of bad omen. So is everything okay now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear his solemnness clearly. So English translation is back. Thank you. We will resume. We are on Tibetan text page number 71. So it's thinking about the suffering and the happiness of the two, two realms, two low realms. So what about those staying outside? So is it fine? Yes, the English section is fine. Is it confirmed now? So page number uh, 70, Tibetan text. So we are on the outline of thinking about the sufferings of the lower uh, realms. 
So here the suffering are again categorized into thinking about the sufferings of the hell realms. I think I've already read it before. And also thinking about the suffering of the animals, thinking about the suffering of hungry ghosts. So first is thinking about the suffering of the hell realms. And hell realms are again categorized into eight hot hells, eight cold hells. So in terms of the hot hell, the intensity of the fire is so uh, strong that it is thousands and millions of, millions of times stronger than the fire that we experience in our planet or in our world. In terms of the fire of the hell, so the fire that we experience or we have in this world is similar to a snow or ice compared to the fire exists in the hell realms. And also the lifespan of the hell realms are already determined and due to the past negative karmic actions so they were born in the hell realms for a determined lifespan. And uh, the lowest lifespan is the neighboring hell realms, which is again about 900,000 years. Also, the duration of the days and nights are different between the, our world and the hell. If we experience the similar intensity of the suffering on this planet, then there is no possibility that we could be able to survive even for a moment. So please on the fan. So these, some of the fans over there are not working since yesterday. Are they not working? And also there are many fans not still on. I <laughs> think they're feeling very hot, I can see that. So if there is fan, you must own it now. Uh, in the old prayer hall of the Jumet Tantra College, it was so hot and they turn on the <laughs> fan and <laughs> the air is not coming later. They came to know that the fan was upside down. <laughs> it was not fixed in the right way. <laughs> That's why it, it was not working. <laughs> so this is about uh, the incident in Jumit Monastery. To have same taste of every experience. And this is also uh, the experience of not uh, uh, experiencing or not knowing the object. Mm. 
His Holiness is reading through the different categories of the hell realms. Uh, now he's reading through the the category of uh, the black line. So if you own this fan or the Turumbiche is or head fan, maybe it may be disturbing Rumbiche. So in the black line hell realms, the the guardians of the hell draw different lines on your body. The lines may be in eight numbers or sixteen numbers, and depending on the line, so they cut your body into different pieces using uh, souls. And also, there are many other guardians of the hell held with different weapons and different. Uh, axis with fire on it and cutting through your body and the lifespan of this uh, elf realms are even uh, severe is the fan on that side of the temple or not I think there are no fans there these fans will not turn on because the monks sitting down say they do not prefer it or they are not suitable for their health reasons, due to health reasons. So due to the one's own uh, past negative karmic results, so we are uh, this, the hell realm, the sentient beings are born in different categories of the hell. And also the intensity of the suffering is again determined or depend by uh, the heavier and uh, the lightness of the karma. So the negative uh, actions are categorized into three, the small, medium, and, and the high or the great. So depending on these negative karmas or actions, one is born, uh, one ends up being result in different categories. They are born in the eight, hot hells and also the neighboring hells, depending upon one's own uh, the karma which result in their being uh, born in these hell realms. And one of the sutras, it is stated that due to not obeying, due to not obeying the, the rules and the promulgations of Vinaya, one is reborn and there are different categories of the vows and breaking of those vows result in different uh, karmic results. So these 
karmic negative actions are considered as one of the main causes of being reborn in the hell realms. And also uh, not practicing according to the teachings of the Bodh Sutra and Tantra, and especially uh, those uh, pre precepts that one we accepted during taking initiations uh, due to that also breaking of those precepts and commitments also result in being born in the hell realms. So we all uh, beings are always engaged in some kind of prayers and uh, also try to abide by our commitments just for the sake of this life, uh, the purpose of this life, but not for the next and the subsequent life. So from now onwards, we have to be, we have to make sure that all our practices and the prayers were done for, uh, for the sake of the next and the subsequent life. And also we have to think about the happiness for the long term. So his only is reading through the the hell of the great veiling. It is similar to the example of the chickens when they are being uh, killed mercilessly and they try to uh, free themselves or lessen their suffering with uh, taking out the f furs and the feathers from their own body and placing uh, is as their own mat in order to protect themselves from be from the suffering of the heat So when they pick off the fur of their body and open their mouth, so the hot oil or the water is being poured into their mouth. So this is an example recited here about the great hell of Great Veil. And those, those sentient beings were born in the the great heat of the hell realms so they are even uh, hotter than the early ones as uh, they are being boiled in huge vessels of copper from the head to toe and at times all their bones and the flashes get burnt or get burnt and they have to run away uh, within the vessels against uh, crying and wailing with the sufferings and the pain. So once uh, then, of course, it comes to us that uh, since all the flesh and the body parts are being uh, taken away or being uh, burnt, so then it's the, what is left is only the skeleton. So then, how are they alive? So, therefore, even though their body parts are all disintegrated, leaving only the skeleton, but s skeleton, but they're still not dead because there are many other. Uh, sentient beings, uh, for example, like the beings of intermediate state of rebirth, who also do not have the body uh, made up of flesh and the bones, still they suffer 
they have to undergo the suffering. So similarly, in terms of the hell realms, who are born in the hot hells, have to undergo intense uh, suffering, and all their body parts get disintegrated, uh, leaving only the skeleton, but they are even not dead. So these are all the the power or the nature of the the karmic result, the karmic action that uh, uh, brought those beings to the hell realm. And the lifespan of those uh, hell realms and uh, beings born there are said to be about half an eon. So next is the the hell realms of uh, where their bodies are. If we measure it, it can be about a few miles. The so the body body which uh, are of few miles apart, and uh, which are also. Uh, happened within a moment without the needs of any further causes. And uh, they're also again burned by fires from f all four directions and also from the top and bottom. And uh, also the body itself becomes the nature of fire and it will burn, leaving again only the skeleton. So these are the su some of the examples, uh, illustrations of the sufferings that are being listed here. And so the hell realms, those beings who were born there, have to undergo such kind of serious sufferings for uh, until the intensity or the until the the nature of their karma is exhausted. And uh, some of the beings here have to automatically the end of climbing, uh, end of climbing the mountains of fire, so which are again the mountain fires, and their hands and legs again get burnt. So the different categories of the hell realms are again due to, as earlier stated, due to the different negative karmas. So therefore, every day we end up accumulating uh, immense number of negative actions. So therefore, we should be very mindful of our actions every day in and out, that our daily actions do not result in accumulating of the karma that will be that will cause us to again reborn in this hell realms and uh, even as a human being also it is important for us to think about uh, these sufferings of the hell realms on our body so that we can feel and all our actions and actions in daily life can be more virtue So next is the health realm, the cold hell. The cold hell is said to be located in the northern side of the hot hell, uh, about in the distance of about uh, 10,000 miles. And uh, those who were born in the cold hells, they also experience the suffering of heat when they're about to pass away from the cold health and again reborn in another hell. Mm. 
So once they pass away from the other hell realms, then they also have to undergo, they also have to pass through the intermediate state of rebirth. And the intermediate state of rebirth, they experience receive very coldness as they are being uh, wandering or going through the icebergs. where there are no sunlights and no any source, there aren't any source of heat. So they experience that they're being uh, forced to walk through uh, the great icebergs. And also the blowing of the winds from four directions, which bring hill storms and are very cold. And this is one of the uh, state of the cold health. And this is uh, called the blister, blister hell. Then again, due to the severe hell, so severe coldness that one experiences in the hell, one uh, all our body, all the body get trembled, and the sound of uh, atata comes from one's teeth and mouth. So that is another category of. Uh, one another realms of the cold hell called Atata hell. And also the color of the body also get uh, also differs from different realms of health, from the blue color to red, and also uh, very intense red. And in the cold realm, as we see in the winter time, when the earth icebergs or the ice uh, mountains, when it become extreme cold, they also get cracked. Similarly, they also their body and all the limbs also get cracked due to the extreme coldness. And also the cracks are developed and developed uh, in terms of the six number of cracks or also ten and also hundreds so depend and which result in all the body parts uh, being uh, cracked into different pieces. And that's that is why the, there's another category of health realm which is known as the cracking of cracking like lotus, cracking like lily, and the great uh, cracking like lotus. So these uh, terms are uh, given name after the nature of the suffering of their body. The lifespan of uh, these different health rooms also differ from each other. So according to uh, the Asanga, the cold health realms and the hot health realms have different lifespans. And among themselves also, the lifespan get differ, but different uh, due to their own karmic results. So among them, the the cold health realm called the blister is, is said to be the shortest one in terms of the lifespan. But even that is a very long time compared to our human rebirth. For example, in during our winter time when there is snowfall and the ice when the eyes are developed so we can experience how cold it is and how intensity the intensity of the coldness and we are not able to stay even for a moment outside in the snowfall and if we if you stay for long so one may get ill or even die out of the coldness and also when 
it is snowing or ice see out icy outside so we cannot walk barefooted so if you if we all think about this uh, real natures uh, that we experience in our day-to-day -day life or during the winter especially, then the sufferings that we explain here uh, in the cold health are even millions and billions of times more stronger and more severe than we experience here. And even though the causes, the karma, uh, the causes of to, to, re to be reborn in these hell realms are due to the 10 negative actions, but Geshe Nimsurwa, he is uh, saying that the most severe and uh, the most common, the causes to be uh, rebuilt in the cold uh, realm is to still what is being offered to the three jewels, for example, stealing of butter or the butter lamb, and also uh, robbing the monk's robes. And also robbing uh, the different households and their items. And these are said to be uh, the causes of uh, to be reborn in the cold hell realms. Then also lighting uh, the prayer hall on, setting prayer hall on fire, and also uh, burning alive a lot of animals are said to be the causes to be reborn, uh, to get burned in the hot hells. So in terms of that, from beginningless time until now, we have accumulated uh, billions of the negative actions to be reborn in these realms. And now with this human rebirth, we must make sh uh, we, we should be determined uh, and make sure that we won't indulge in such negativities. So I think we will stop here for today. So it is impossible to finish this year.
Tu dis, on m'a dit, 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 on m'